real quick over uh, on YouTube. And uh, welcome back. It is late night uh, with Bateman. Um, had to watch the Vols tonight. They've actually won like three games in a row. So, or at least two games in a row. So, I'm pretty pumped. Um, yeah, let's see if I can get the chat on YouTube real quick. If it's working. If it's working. It may not work. We'll see. I always run into problems. Here we are. Yeah, we got 12 guys in here right now. I'm going to pop out the chat. And uh, we're going to take Q&A tonight. Uh, just winging it, you know. And it didn't take long for my cell phone to go off. All right. I'm trying to buy some baits from a guy or trade from some and... There's some striking wake shads out there. Let me pop out this chat here. Pop out the chat. Looks like there's a little lag on the video tonight. I'm sorry about that. Let me see if I can fix that real quick for you guys. I'm going to post this over on Facebook. <clears throat> uh, just a second. And we'll get on with our bad selves. Make sure my internet's... I think I need to go shut my Xbox off really quickly. Just making my internet really slow. I think my son's on there playing Call of Duty. I need to get his little tail off. He's been in trouble this week. Hasn't behaved at school. Yeah, my whole internet's slow. And they're racing some freaking dirt cars right here in town at the fairgrounds. And so if you hear it, something sounds like a pissed off bumblebee. It's the four-cylinder warriors over here. Be right back. All right, we'll see if that's uh, helped the live stream at all. Turn the Xbox off. All right, I'm posting this on my Facebook page. And we're going to talk some baits. All right. Get back into my streaming software. And let's pull this up and see what you guys are doing tonight. What's up, Sean Z, Ryan Somerville from Canada, Matt M. I don't know if I'm the jank man. I did kind of create the phrase, but man, I haven't been catching any janks lately. What's up, Zach? At least, fine. I bought a Berkeley Flicker shed and it did not run straight out of the pack. Is this right? Well, most of your crankbaits should run straight out of the pack. Uh, but I'll give you a quick tip. All you got to do on your crankbait... I just grab one from behind me real quick to sh demonstrate. Most all your crankbaits, you're gonna have the little spot right here where the split rings attach, and uh, there's a little piece, metal piece, uh, basically the line tie. If it's running to the right, take your pliers, bend that line tie to the left. So running left, bend the right line tie to the right. Uh, Jeff Scrobro, Bass Inc. Can question, what jerk bait is the Provoke similar to? Well, you know what? I'll just get one out and show you. Uh, it's really similar to a Mega Bass Vision 110, but there are differences. I get this question a lot. That's why I keep this bait or box of jerk baits because I like catching jakes. And so uh, I'll show you. Uh, the differences here. I'll get out of Mega Bass. What's up, Mike Gardner? Big win for the dogs tonight. Good job over there taking care of the Gators. Uh, my balls won. Uh, they did looked okay. Balls looked okay. 
But I'll take the dub. Let's see if we can get to a bowl game. I didn't really want to kill anybody tonight. What's up, Brian Crawford? Now, that's the guy that needs to be on here telling you how to catch big fish is Brian Crawford. I've never seen him weigh a small one, ever. It's always giant ones. Uh, me and Brian, uh, my partner and his partner, it seemed like there in 2007, 2008, every weekend we were fishing to get you. They were, him and Alfred were winning, or me and Jeff were winning. And, oh, man, that was the heyday of Kentucky Barker Lakes, Brian. Had so much fun. Uh, so let's get back to this real quick. Uh, so this is a Mega Bass uh, 110, Vision 110. And this is uh, the Six Cents Provoke 106. So number one, the Provoke is a bit taller um, in the back. And it is a little bit bulkier of a bait. i got to move this chat so I can actually see myself in the camera a little bit. There we go. All right. So Mega Bass on the bottom, Provoke up top. So... I tilt this. You can tell that provokes just a little bit fatter. Now I'll turn it, turn them up here. Provoke over here in my right hand, Mega Bass in the left. Provoke is definitely a wider bait, but you can tell it's a little bit long. This uh, provoke here in my right hand, um, it's a little bit wider, whereas the Mega Bass is a little bit more skinnier on the tail section here. Um, provoke. I don't know if you can tell. Here, but provoke the lip. This is to provoke the lip is a little bit wider, a little bit thicker. Um, obviously, I, I'll, I'll throw the Mega Bass quite a bit. It's a very good bait. Um, you can see some of the videos. Uh, I throw the provoke quite a bit as well. This is the one I caught them on in the the early spring video from last year. So big difference in price though. This bait. Uh, is going to run you about $10, $11. This bait is going to run you uh, $20 to $22. Now, that said, uh, what's up, Joe Gross? Somerset, Kentucky. Been there several times. Lake Cumberland. Uh, that said, this is a badass jerk bait when the water is, let's say, 60 degrees and below. When it's 60 degrees and above, I'm going to throw the Provoke. Um, I catch just as many in a little bit warmer water. On the provoke as i will this and uh both companies put out some of the best color patterns in the game this is like ob gizzard uh, this is ghost pro uh ghost bone blue or something like that great bait um you know strike king makes good jerk baits too but the main difference too the eye on the provoke is a lot bigger than the eye on the mega bass so the provoke actually gives it a little bit fatter taller bigger profile go with what you're confident in so both suspend very good. I'm going to put that back in my box here before I lose those. Because I got some cool new boats. Did Mikey Balls get the glide bait before going to the main lake with Alex Gene? Yes, Mikey has had that bait for about a month, uh, James. Um, I was going to go down there, but I got other priorities I got to take care of. And, uh, you know, I've been working with Mark Menendez. And, and we had to film a bunch of stuff today. And, you know, Mark hooked me up. He gave me some new striking stuff. We're, we're going to talk about this new striking stuff here in a second. That's a good one, Dustin. Provokes kind of like a pointer. And uh, Vision 110 had a baby. Black Dog Bass, what's up, man? I hadn't talked to you in a while. You're going to have to call me this week. Other than the death preference, 110 plus 1 or the 2. I personally throw the plus 1. Uh, every now and then, I'll throw the plus 2. There's one thing about 6 cents. They don't make a deep provoke anymore. So if I'm wanting to get into that six foot or deeper, I'm going to go with the J300D, uh, which is a Strike King bait, or I'm going to go with a plus two Mega Bass. And that, that dual realis is a really good one, that deep diver. Um, do you take the split rings off your jerk baits and tie a loop knot? Uh, no, I tie San Diego jam knot, the same knot I tie for 99% of things. I just tie right to the split ring. Lucky Strike Jerk Bait is very similar to Mega Bass. Uh, I feel like their sizes are way off, though. That small one is itty bitty tiny. Uh, the the paint finishes they got a few decent ones, but the rest of them look really rough, uh, really rough. Let's see here. What's up, Flats Out? I'm gonna go back and answer any questions in case I miss Mike Dove. Man, Thunderhawk Lures up in here. Good to see you, Mike. 
What do you think is a good truck for a 21 foot bass boat? Well, considering I have a single cab Dodge, I would say anything extended cab with a decent motor that runs. Um, I'm a Dodge guy. Don't hold that against me. Um, but I have pulled with Chevys and they did fine. Uh, Mark Menendez has a Ford and I really like it. Let's see here. What's up, William Chope from Philadelphia? Fly, Eagles fly. My man Derek Barnett over there. Really like the Eagles, actually. I'm a Dolphins fan at heart, but man, I just can't watch them anymore. So. Jackal Squad Minnow is a good jerk bait, and that's an old school one. The rear range, I really like it better in the fall. It's a really good jerk bait uh, if you want to fish fast. It casts really good in the wind. If you want to fish fast, great on clear water lakes. Um, we're not just letting it hold in front of a fish for a long time. Stacy Sean Z is a really good jerk bait. Unfortunately, a lot of guys uh, really don't utilize that bait, and it gets deep down there. Eight pound floral, man, you can hit some fish. What's up, Joe Reynolds? What's up, David Thomas? Russ Hyatt, what's my favorite jerk bait rod? Well, I actually use the same rod. I throw a, a Little John square bills on it. I need to get another one made. It's basically a seven foot, uh, 843 MHX blank, a moderate, uh, medium, moderate, fast action. I really like that one. And you can check that out in uh, one of my videos in the bag. Just, just search, you know, Jane's on Lake X. Shady, I haven't got a suspended quake. What is my favorite loose bait caster? Well, I'll be honest. I don't own any loose. Uh, I did get a new reel in this week. Um, but I've been playing around with a bunch of Mark's uh, loose. And, you know, some of the older ones never really fit my hand. I did like the BB-1 Pro for cranking. But I really like the Team Lose Light. That is my favorite one. That one fits my hand good. It's light. I like the handles on it. It's very comfortable. I think you're going to see me throw some loose reels in the next six months or so, probably coming up soon because they're making some stuff I like. You know, I, I like Daiwa and I got some Shimano in, uh, but I'm a Daiwa guy right now and I have no reason to change, but I don't, you know, I don't have a real sponsor. No one's paying me. So if I want to use a Shimano on a video, I'll use a Shimano or whatnot. Chris, it went out this morning, bud. If you don't have it by, I'd say, Wednesday, let me know. Uh, I know my wife dropped it off at the post office this morning. I'll look uh, see if I got tracking for you. Because I shipped out a lot of stuff. So, I like the Hopper Mag, and I like the Pro TI. But, you know, I'm not a big guy on the super high-end reels. Um, you know, my budget, I really don't like spending more than, like, 170 bucks. And you can find uh, some good deals on that Team Lose lot. Um, but, uh, let's, let's just go ahead and start this off. I'll show you some random stuff. Speaking of reels, I got one in and I got this, uh, for swim baits. This is the SLX XT 150 HG. So basically you're getting a wider spool SLX, deeper spool. Um, this one's a seven to one. I really wish I'd gotten a six, three. Um, but I think this real retails for like 119, 129. It's a pretty good looking color out. I, I like the flat black on it with the blue accents. You know, I'm not a UK fan, but uh, this is a real, I really want to turn into a budget swim bait setup. Something I can throw uh, lower end glide baits, um, paddle tails and stuff like that. And not be worried to put, you know, 17, 20 pound, maybe 25 pound floral on here. Um, I would like it in a six, but you know, I won this thing in a giveaway, so I really can't complain. Really excited about this because I fished the SLX a few months ago in Gunnersville, the DC, and I liked it. But the XT, a little bit beefier version. Man, if you've never thrown an SLX, uh, it is basically a Corrado with a different color frame and like one less ball bearing. So for the money, I'll be honest with you, this is probably one of the best reels on the market, the, the SLX. Uh, nothing against any of the Daiwas I got. I really like my Daiwas. Uh, but, you know, I was always a Shimano man at heart. So, now I will tell you that Lose LFS for $99 is a really good reel, period. So, that's something new I got in. Really excited about tossing that. So, speaking of swim baits, I got some swim baits in. 
Dave Thomas, uh, I need to go check my mailbox. I'm glad you said that. I may just go run out there real quick. I may just go run out there really quick. All right, you guys said you wanted me to wing it. Well, I'm winging it because I just ran out to the mailbox and put you here. Oh yeah, that's legit. Thanks for the heads up, David. We're gonna we're gonna check these out here in just a minute. Then, obviously, I got something else in here. So uh, we'll open all this stuff up here in a minute. Let's open the stuff that I already got open. So. So this is uh this is what I posted on Instagram and uh here on the YouTube channel. This is the Storm Arashi Glide. Now I think these are gonna retail right at about forty dollars, which is very good price point uh for a swim bait, especially a glide bait. This is the glide nineteen. So that's kind of like a sexy shed. I actually kinda of like the paint job on this. It's a little translucent, but it's got a very good custom feel to it i won't say it's quite a jdm paint job but it's nice i like the tail it's soft uh they got give you a spare tail in here put a pretty heavy duty snap on there some guys uh use snaps i'll probably take that off and exchange it for a heavy duty split ring uh but it's pretty cool because you can see the internal components uh this glide bait is heavy up front it's a it's a pretty heavy bait for the size but I like how loose that joint is. Um, from all accounts, you can make this thing do a lot of stuff. It has a good S motion. Uh, you can kind of burn it and twitch it. Um, I think Nick on here was telling me that uh, this is probably one of the best affordable glide baits on the market. If you can get your hands on one, I suggest you do. I think they're shipping at Independent Shop's first tackle warehouse has them on their site. Um, but definitely going to be in the beginner glide game. And I, I think there's going to be a lot of old school glide bait fishermen that fish this as well. So, uh, 40 bucks for a good glide bait. No big deal. I mean, the shizzard, y'all saw that video. That's a $70 bait, but shizzard's a totally different profile. Uh, big time swim bait fisherman. You're going to have, you know, a gill, a shad, something like this, but as the Rashi glide, really sweet bait. Uh, and appreciate Swimbait Universe hooking me up on that right there. Uh, Johnny Ellis, uh, we're thinking about you and your dad, Johnny. So, um, appreciate you, man, for taking care of the bait, man. So, thanks, Robert. I appreciate it. White Whale Fishing Opinions on Shine Glider Bait Sanity Explorer. I throw a 168 S wave and want to try different baits. What should I try now? Uh, that Bait Sanity is a really good glide bait. Uh, I've not thrown it, but the people I trust, like Matt Allen and some of our mutual friends, Bait Sanity. Uh, Shine Glide's great for the price. Uh, don't get me wrong, but that Bait Sanity gets bait. Mark S. F. S. Waver is a really good bait. Um, you know, below that, you're only looking at some Savage Gear stuff. Uh, I'm a Glide Flute, which is a good bait. And uh, S. Waver. Definitely um, play with your options, man. If uh, you're really confident in the S waiver, keep throwing it. Um, I know Six Sense is working on a legit glide, uh, different than the Flow Glider and some other stuff. I've seen some prototype drawings, I'm trying to help old Philip with that. We're going to get a Six Sense glide out, so um, and a good one. It may be two years, but we're going to have a good one when it comes to market. So, um, but definitely check out. Arashi Glide if you get a chance. And you know, hey, 
guess what? It's fixing to be Black Friday. Save your money. 20% off on TW. You'll get this for like 35 bucks or something. I think it needs to say actually 37 or 39 So you can save some money on Black Friday. Veterans coming up. Yeah, get on that TW sale. Because I got my eye on some things. Yes, Russ, I do know Matt and Tim. I actually have went fishing with them. Matt and I did a live stream about two years ago. So, Gancraft 70, that's a little small. I've got a, a, a smaller Grant Gancraft right up here. Um, I like it quite a bit. Uh, they're right at about $40, too. So, let's see what else I got. I got some more swim baits. Some more burrito baits. And I didn't even know this was coming. I was talking to... Uh, uh, the guy that owns Burrito Baits, his name's Gal, or we's just in the swim bait community calling him Carp. And uh, I said, hey, man, you know, let me know in a couple months when you come out with some line throughs. And he said, well, I just sent you some. I said, what? He said, yeah, I thought I would send you a couple baits uh, for giving me a shout out. And I said, you don't have to do that, man. But he sent me a couple, and uh, this is one of his more popular uh, baits. This is... The nacho, and so this is a a pretty. It's kind of a small profile swim bait, small little baby bluegill. Uh, you can see this little wide paddle tail down here, and I think he pours these on silicone or something. But it's an awesome feeling plastic. But this little nacho is a great lift and fall swim bait. Uh, if you guys are like the old storm wildlife shiners and Berkeley stuff. This is like a HD version, but I really like the color, color pattern on this little nacho here. You would crush some fish up north on this thing. I know the guys that go to uh, Bacharach, uh, El Salto, all that. Monty Mac, my man, what is going on? Monty Mac, legend of the Bateman channel, uh, professional scrounger man now. Um, he is fixing to be duck hunting every day. I've been watching the Mallard Estates, Outfitters, Snapchats, Instagram stories. Monty, appreciate the donation, man. Uh, we're going to have to go through all these soon. So this nacho is sweet. Uh, I will tell you guys that uh, burritobaits.com, uh, he drops new baits every Sunday night at 7 o'clock. So put that on your bookmarks and get on the website about 6.58 and he'll have baits available. So the next bait uh, he sent me was one I've wanted for a long time and didn't know this was coming. And this is, it's not a real shad. This is this is actually a bait. Uh, this right here is the line through shad. This is kind of his original bait uh, he really started out with. But what's cool about this, and I'll have to rig that this up on a different video. I don't have time tonight, but you see this little hole right here. So you run your line through the hole, and it actually comes out the top, okay? And you put a treble hook up here. So it actually makes this line through pretty weedless, where you can bump the bottom and stuff and not worry about getting hung up. You basically got a built-in Butch Brown rig. So I've, there's a lake in Tennessee. Monty Mac knows about it. Gibson County Lake is full of big, giant gizzards, and maybe the next state record bass in tennessee oh yeah this guy is gonna go down there jake lawrence yeah jake would have this right here but really love the burrito baits carp is an excellent dude and if you guys want uh, the guy that makes these baits join the stream and talk swim baits uh one night let me know right down here in the comment section i'll get uh carp hugger on the stream he's already said he'd love to do it so uh dude this is I could fillet this, to be honest with you. And I haven't ate all day, so I probably could. Hey, Bateman, what's the fishing like? Are the ba bass sitting pretty good? It's getting better. We've had some cold fronts come through. Water temperatures in the low 60s, high 50s. Um, it's going to be uh, good. Uh, there's been fish being caught. Ran some high school kids today. Catch them on sexy dogs. Uh, so I also got to throw the new sexy dog hard knocker. Good bait. Uh, the weight is actually uh, right here in the bait. Uh, there's some weight up top. These aren't weights. Um, I don't know exactly why they're there, but they actually, when you put a treble hook down there, I think it's where they go in to kind of protect it from the top of the bait. So, 
Good question, Sean. Favorite lures this time of year? Lipless, square bill, any kind of top water, wake bait, spinner bait, and by gosh, guys, I'm going to throw a jig. A jig does get bit this time of year. Swim jig, football jig, but and I'll throw swim baits quite a bit. You know, I always got one tied on. Ooh, that's a good question. Nick, throw your answer out there. Help the man out. I tell you, um, over at S-Waver, I'd go a Gancraft if you can afford it. Uh, Gancraft or a Mega Bass Ice Slide, which some guys uh, prefer the Ice Slide, but it's kind of like... Uh... Yep, that was from Burrito Bait, Sean. Uh, Ice Slide's kind of got more of a jerk bait feel to it. Some guys like it, some guys don't. I haven't thrown it much, so... All right, what do we got next? I got to put all this stuff down so I remember. Got the Arashi bait, got the burrito baits. Okay, let's talk a little crankbait action real quick. Rattle Trap's got a new square bill. This is, I believe, the SB57 designed by Mark Daniels. Uh, this is a prototype. And my Rattle Trap uh, rep or friend, he works for them. He got it to me, and I really like this. One, it's got this circuit board lip on it, so it's going to make it do some really cool things when it hits cover. But I like the design of the body. It's a little bit different. It doesn't have that traditional, you know, everybody's square bill look. It's almost got a JDM look to it. Uh, they got some really cool paint jobs. You can pre-order these on Tackle Warehouse. Um, but it doesn't have a super loud rattle. It's... Uh, it's pretty faint, and the rattle chamber goes uh, intersects the bait. So when it's wobbling, it's just going to make little faint sounds. It's not as loud as, you know, the echo from Rattle Trap, but this is a great little finesse square rail. I shouldn't even say it's finesse. It's like a 1.5 size, a good all-around size. It's actually a lot more yellow than you're seeing on the webcam, but really like that color. I, I, dirty water, I'd throw it right there. So that's a good bait. Um, so I did get, I even got some frogs in and I don't even know if I'm supposed to show these. Um, dude, MR6 is legit. That's probably one of the most underrated crankbaits out there right now. Uh, when I'm cranking, I throw straight fluoro for the most part, or I'll throw, uh, like a copolymer line. Do you have a scamp class bait that Alex talked about? I do not. I didn't watch Alex's uh, stream last night, unfortunately. But uh, so uh, net bait is kind of merged with some other companies. And uh, one of those companies is Scumfrog. And uh, I don't know if these colors are ever coming out. But check out these guys. These are really cool little frogs and uh, the Bobby's Perfect Frog, I'll tell you right now, is probably one of the best matte frogs out there. But this is uh, that's a little black black bird with little red wings. Cool looking on the belly as well. Here's another bird pattern in these frogs. I don't know if these can make it to the market. Uh, I like this one the best, whether it's a bird or not. It's just a good, natural looking color, uh, good and dark. Um really like that these are super super soft and uh, i think they've redone the weight cell it weights uh right there that's that's the butt end of it these are great mat fishing frogs um and then here's kind of a hd leopard uh frog pattern uh, pretty cool uh like i said don't know if these are all make it to market i'm not a huge frog guy i do throw them quite a bit uh here but i'm not a mat fisherman we don't have any grass so you can kind of See all those guys right there? They're really sweet. Don't flip it around. It's a little bird eyes. But I do like that Bobby's Perfect Frog. I mean, I like Spro Frog. Um, but I'm not the best frog fisherman unless it's kind of an open water deal. That's what I like. A uh, Yozuri hybrid line, I've used that. Canine is my other cranking line. This uh, I've got 100% canine over here, uh, but the regular canine fishing. Uh, this stuff right here. Oh, this is uh, their company out of Tennessee. Um, I use the regular for cranking. The 100% is pretty good too. Uh, bottom contact baits. Um, 
I like Sunline as well. So sometimes I just feel like I put something different on. Dude, I did see it, Monty. Tennessee Shad 2.0. Uh, Mark Menendez said, I saw that color. And I said, I hope, I bet Baxter had something to do with that. And I said, no, I didn't, but I would. That's something I would do. Uh, Mark wouldn't let me snag one from him, no. But he gave me a bunch of stuff I'm fixing to show off. So, Any of the Buka baits are legit. He's going to try to start throwing those bulls. Um, let's see here. Kevin, did you see where MB is coming out with the Magnum Pony? Yes, I did. That's a pretty cool frog, so. Uh, Strike King did the shizzle color. I don't know who designed it. Uh, they've got a new guy designed some of their paint jobs, so really excited about that over there at Strike King. Um, And while well, I got some weird people always come up, come up on these live streams. Cavacho Frog is a great frog. It's really, really good. Good hook. Walks really, really well. So let's uh let's see what we got in some of these boxes. I probably can't find a knife. Uh, but luckily I got these. Six cents pliers or scissors. This is probably something I found on the internet. Actually, I traded some stuff for this right here. Favorite buzzbait, uh, War Eagle, was probably my favorite one, to be honest with you. And, and the, uh, this one right here, I showed this last time. This is uh, kind of like the old Booger Man. These prototype water buzz baits. If you know what a booger man buzz bait is, this thing right here is legit too. Really like that. Very simple. They run good. That is very true. Canine is not expensive. It is a good line. Oh, yeah, I definitely traded for these. Rapala DT uh, 10 Chartreuse Purple Shiner. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. I like a Rapala DT. That's probably one of my favorite balsa crankbaits out there. Wooden crankbaits, however you want. Uh, this color's been discontinued. Uh, kind of hard to find. But we got a few for the personal collection. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Great dingy watercolor. Dude, I've won a lot of money on a DT-16 on Kentucky Lake and a DT-10 back when I fished all the time, especially Chartreuse and Book. Yeah, Scottsboro Tackle's got a good one. I need to uh, call Tim and let him send me one or, or whatnot. Good people. Some kind of other Chartreuse and Purple Bait in here. This one's kind of rare, I think. Yeah, this is a DT Thug. So this is a really good cold water crankbait right here. The the DT Thug's discontinued. I never had seen one in this color. And dude had one, so. Yes, I have had plenty of issues uh, with the bills pulling loose on a DT. I think everybody has. You cannot slap a Rapala crankbait on the water. It will break. Um, you've got to be pretty gentle with them. You can't bang them. You, you can bang them into brush piles and all that, but you can't be hitting the banks and boat docks. and It's not good. So these are the old hooks. These uh, these are what they had, the VMC Sure Sets. I'm not a fan. I take those off. Big swim baits. Uh, I throw 17 to 20-pound Sunline uh, Assassin for the most part. Um, I don't throw braid. If I don't throw fluorocarbon, I will go with uh, m mono. Like you know, some guys don't like, but I like P line CXX. It does get some memory, but my gosh, I mean, if you get hung up, you're gonna have to go after your bait because you can pull a truck with P line. No problem, uh, Curse. We always got room for guys in here. 
Yeah, Vincent, so these baits are probably like seven to eight years old, probably longer than that, maybe 10 years old. And the big thing where Paladin was put, or VMC was these sure set hooks on there. Uh, I'm not a big fan because if you crank brush, they get hung up, period. Uh, so I'll change those on there. Some guys really like them. Um, they swear by them. I'm not a big fan. Look here, a little DT4 Charters Purple Shiner. That one would be really good. And spring. One thing I like about this DT4, it's got that little pinging noise to it. Really, really like that. So, uh, let's see here. We might as well. Is this not the coolest package? Dude's got it going on. I think I'm going to use that for a thumbnail later. So, I need to save this package. Maybe Mike Gilbert would give me a t-shirt or something. Let's see what we got here. Again, I traded some dudes some baits, and he ordered these for me. So this is the Citizen new packaging. Uh, the old packaging is more of a clamshell uh, box. Uh, he made new packaging. He said to keep the tails formed up. This is a, you know me, I had to get my purple. What's up, Harry? So this is the six inch uh, Citizen. So it's quite a bit smaller than the ones I had before. Um, flat bag, this is definitely a hand pour mold. I think uh, it's either six out beast hook uh, for this one right here, or six out on her flashy. Um, it's a really cool looking bait. I'm a big fan of these gizzard imitators. Uh, that's the primary forge for big bass. Uh, on the TVA chain and out west, these guys like this. Uh, working class zero, uh, dot com. I think that's his website. Um, uh, working class zero dot net. And here's the deal if you're wanting these baits, uh, sign up on Mike Gilbert's uh, mailing list. Uh, he uses the same website as I do for mine, which I haven't updated in forever, but I think I'm going to start doing some stuff. I've got to, I'm just wasting money. Um, sign up on his mailing list and you'll know four or five days before they put a drop. So I had a guy want some crankbaits. I said, well, here's the deal. Here's what I want. He said, you send me the crankbaits and I'll get those. Works out. Uh, that's the cool thing about the internet. You get with people and, you know, not everyone's made out of money, but you may have something somebody else wants that you don't care for. You can make trades like that all the time, but um, be careful who you trade with. Uh, always go with someone reputable. Um, and I'll be honest, I'm not the fastest shipper in the world, but I always try to take, stay in contact with people. So. All right, see if we got any more. I think we got that big seven in here. Yeah. So this is the seven inch version. And, uh, this is a blue, more of a blue gizzard. I really like that packaging. This is, I'm wondering if uh, Mike is planning on doing a little retailing eventually with the way this package is. So this is the Big Daddy. And uh, I've got one of these in purple. But this is the blue version. Whew. I mean, that thing is sick. I can always tell the act, tail action on swimming. We see when I hold that and how far it bends down. This is going to have a good wag to it. Really good swim. It is tough to find a heavy action swim bait rod that has a moderate action. You're almost going to have to go with an extra heavy cranking rod. Um, and for a long time, Sean, that's what I threw swim baits on, like a heavy action cranking rod. Um, Douglas Fishing has a, some really good rods. They have a, I've got a 784F swim bait rod matrix series, and it was designed for ospreys and trash fish, and it would make an awesome rod for this right here because this really don't weigh much more than trash fish but that's cool that's from working class zero those are hard to get man i'm, I'm going to tell you if you want those baits you better be on that website sign up on his mailing list or you're going to have to pay scalpers for prices yeah seven inch 10 aught boost hook uh, he even puts on the package 10 aught weighted swim bait hook required um 
I can't read the stuff in oh I thought it was in Spanish, but it's just uh Tormentor Twist Tail Stealth Mode Hook Slot. Yeah, it's got a hook slot in the bottom. And then this one this bait weighs 1.5 ounce plastic, whereas this one weighs 2.5. Uh, six alt weighted swim but eight on a six inch. So we got us some of those, and I guess I'm just gonna hang them up here. I'm gonna redesign the bait cave pretty soon. Fury 75 95 is a great swim bait rod. What's up, Wolfie? We're we're talking baits here, man. This is what we do. What we do. I'm fixing to show you all a bunch of new Strike King stuff. I'm really excited about it. So, I haven't really got anything new from Six Cents to show you all because uh, I pretty much showed everybody the new stuff. I don't have the hooks yet. Uh, they'll be in soon. They're on the website. So, I'm interesting. I'm an owner hook guy. Uh, I throw a few mustads. So, I want to give the Six Cents hooks a legit shot. I really like that worm hook, the hybrid hook. So, I have an eight foot die with swim bait heavy and it's too heavy for a S Wader 168. We'll throw a 200. Depends on how big bait you want to throw. Yes, I, I, I agree. I think treble baits in general, whether it's a swim bait or a 10 XD, I mean, let's be honest, a 10 XD weighs probably as, as close to much as a S Wader 168. Um, Y'all fixing to have to excuse me because my battery is getting low on my laptop. But that modern action. Uh, comes on. Let me go grab my charger real quick. Cause it's gonna take me a bit to get through this Strike King. Uh, Y'all said wing it, so I'm winging it. Getting random tonight. Plug this guy in real quick and we'll be back ready to roll. One thing about Bateman, it ain't ever prepared. And if it can go wrong, it'll go wrong here. Uh, yeah, Sean, let me get you a link. Um, if I can find it here. <clears throat> I'll find it on the internet for you real quick. I'm glad it's it's nice and cool outside because uh, the, usually the heat in the bait room's got me sweating, but I'm feeling good right now. But yeah, it's uh, I'm gonna find it here. I'm fixing to paste this link for you, Sean. Eventually, they're expensive. I'll have to bring one on the show. 185 guys watching. Holy cow, you guys are awesome. Here you go, Sean. Here's their link. Uh, you scroll all the way down, casting 784. That's the one you want for those big soft swim baits, but they make some eight footers too. I did show the Arashi Glide, Victor. I'll bring it back up. Uh, for you, Victor wants to see the Rashi Glide. There it is. Once again, you know, Brandon Polinick designed this. So Brandon Polinick is a stupid good glide bait fisherman. Probably one of the first guys on tour to really utilize glide bait. So, um, I know Brad Knight over on FLW side is a good guy. You know, this has kind of got that Roman made mother look to it, but it's also kind of got its own uh, features as well cool bait no problem mike uh my top spinner i think that's between 35 and 40 dollars i tell you what i'll pull up the cell phone so i don't have to get distracted here on um 
um, the laptop, find a price for it. Dude, I will tell you guys, if y'all like topwaters, like Super Spooks and Head and Spooks, TW has them on sale for like $4.80. Yeah. One Ocker Spook, Chug and Spook, Super Spook, four eighty four. You can't... You, when I was in retail, you can't even buy them for that, so... What size reel are you going to throw the Rasha Glide on? 200, 300? I'm going to, I'm going to use this uh, SLX 150XT. Um, I don't own any two, 300 size reels. If I was, I'd probably own a Tranks or a 200 to Tula, but I think I can get away with that SLX XT. I want to build a budget swim bait setup. And um, I got to find the right rod. I'm thinking a Fury 806 because they make an 806 Fury. Would be a really good budget big swim bait rod with that reel. $37.99. Oh, they are on, in stock on Tackle Warehouse right here. Um, the color I had in my hand was Threadfin Shad. It's right here. They have them in stock, guys. I'd probably jump on this before they put it on their little in stock at TW video. Uh, this is the color that's been really popular too. It's got that Roman made look. Look at all you guys up north. There's even a perch color. A bluegill color. I like this one right here. Blueback herring. I like that one quite a bit. So it's got more of a true uh, glide action uh, than an S waiver. But I have I've, I've tossed in my pool for like five minutes. My pool is like the color of toilet, so I couldn't tell much. Uh, I'm going to go play with it over my pond. Maybe I should just make a full review video, but I'm not a, I don't feel qualified to tell you if it's an excellent glide bait or not, because I'm not a glide bait guru. Um, I can tell you if it feels good to me and if I'd keep throwing it, it definitely felt like a really good one. Dude, Fran Canatoy is a great dude, man. Great dude. And I like those Douglas rods. Uh, and of course the ones I got at the X matrix, they're the expensive ones. They sent me a 755, which I throw a worm, I throw a football jig, I throw swim baits on. That's a really good rod. Um, that 784, that's pretty much been big swimmers for me. What jig head do I throw the Ned rig on? I use the owner block head a lot. I got a little... I got a little finesse box. I always take this little G finesse box here with me. I've got several different um, Ned heads in here. But I've been going back to this one all the time and that's the owner blockhead very simple i i don't even worry if they're colored if i want it brown i'll just put it and make brown on it but that's the one i like it's got a good it's got a pretty stout hook on it and that's why i like that and a good little keeper system um that one's probably my favorite uh, i do use the uh this shrooms right here the ned locks quite a bit as well um but you're fixing to see some more Ned stuff. Just a second. Dude, Shad Rat and Bluegill color gets chewed. Uh, I really like those Shad Raps when they look faded and almost worn out. So, let's talk about some striking stuff right here. Any swim baits are good to throw right now, wouldn't it, bait man? Baby Bull Shad? Yeah, Baby Bull Shad would work. I'd fish it pretty much on a straight burn. Um, yeah, man, uh... <clears throat> Ben's got it going on. He's a good dude. I was really supposed to beat this Launch Master Classic this weekend. And I just I had some things come up at work. Put in for vacation. Got denied. So I couldn't I couldn't make it up there. And uh, it happens, man. I don't have a lot of seniority, but that's okay. And uh, me and Milliken are going to get together uh, eventually and, and do some fishes. Uh, five lures for the rest of your life with well, already probably a 6XD, um, a Bastrix or Scottsboro swim bait. Uh, take your pick there. A Spicy Beaver, a Lucky Strike Ringworm, and a Baxter's Bug, one a football jig. Yep, that'd do it. That would do it. Um, I probably, Jack is a great bait. Um, don't get me wrong, but that, with those other five, I've caught so many fish on those. Um, yeah, it happens, man. So, all right. 
New from Strike King. KVD 2.5 Wake. Uh, this color is pro blue. Not a new color, but man, I, I've seen this bait in the water. I got to mess with it uh, today. Dude, this is a great weight bait. And it's not really a super big weight bait. It's the 2.5 size. But uh, it'll get them. So what's cool about this is you can throw it on fluorocarbon and it'll run like six inches below the surface. Uh, you can tie on mono or braid and it's going to run right up top. And you can burn it. This thing won't blow out. But uh, if you'll notice, I got this thing in my hand. You see this little circle? There's a weight that's going back and forth, back and forth. You can see it sliding right now. So when this bait's just waking on the surface and just really wobbling hard, it, it makes an awesome loud sound. Really good bait. Probably one of the better baits I've seen striking come out with in a long time. You know, everyone liked the wake shad. Wake shad casts like crap. I'll be honest with you. This will outcast that wake shad. What's the difference I see between Strike King and Six Sense Wake Baits? Uh, the action, so the ADX is going to even have a, a little wider action than this. This is going to have a tighter wiggle to it. Both are really good. Uh, I'm just going to tell you guys, uh, you look at my boxes. I've got three main brands. Strike King, uh, Six Sense, and I've got a bunch of Spro stuff. And then i got some JDM, some flat side bosses sprinkled in, but... You know, top two docks for me will always be Strike King and Six Cents. And uh, do like this 2.5 weight. Different action though. Movement ADX, great bait. Very unique. Very unique. It's a little bit, got more of a knocking sound where this is more of a high pitch knock. Always have options. Always have options. So put this over here where I don't forget it. Heck yeah, we'll need to get a TW link over here. That's what I need. I don't need to pay no money. TW and just send me gift cards. I'd be happy with that. So, I will tell you guys, Tennessee Shad 2.0 in that wake. I'm going to see if TW's got it real quick. I'll tell you what I want you guys to do. If you want to order from a Tackle Warehouse, I want y'all to go on Tactical Bassin's website, Matt and Tim, and click their link to Tackle Warehouse so they get a little kickback if you buy anything. They're good guys and help me out. So I've got a better picture of this Tennessee Shad 2.0, uh, but they do have some KVD wakes in. This is a good new color of the shizzle. I didn't get to get all this stuff, but I'll... Uh, I'll have it here in the future and we'll definitely um, put them on the show. Dude, this color right here is killer. Oyster. Oh, yeah. So let's talk about plastics because uh, a lot of guys didn't know they come out with a bunch of new colors. And this is a, a new color. This is Tequila Sunrise orange flake and so this is the ocho tequila sunrise orange flake uh so i'm i don't throw the ocho a whole lot i'll be honest with you guys but uh mark handing these to me this is a pretty sick looking uh new color ocho is a good bait a lot of guys throw it you know i throw a sink on most of the time i really like the six cents um clout uh, so those will be in the rotation um i know guys love the ocho and it definitely catches fish but that's a cool new color um they got some other new clo colors i'm fixing to show you well uh but this is the one i'm really excited about that new color and that is the 10 inch bull worm and that tequila sunrise guys <laughs> you know them janks be on this thing. I go back to Pickwick or Gunnersville next year. Uh, that color, that will get them. I really like that copper flake. Uh, whoever come up with that copper flake on the uh, Tequila Sunrise, kudos to you. You did a great job. 
I really love that big uh, bullworm. I'm going to use, no, I won't use a, a 10 aught hook on this, man. I'll use a 5 aught worm hook or uh, owner makes a 7 aught uh, worm. I actually think sometimes those big uh, hooks, you don't hook up to that many fish. Uh, I, I still feel the fish bite it at the head for some reason. Um, a lot of guys throw these big bullworms on swing heads too, so that's a tip for you. But that color, uh, Tequila Sunrise Orange Flake, I know TW has that. You can also get this um, and the Cutter Worm uh, and the Mag Cutter Worm. So you Florida guys, I know Tequila Sunrise is a big color there. Y'all might want to jump on that. So uh, that's a, like an 11-inch worm, Victor, and it's thick. You know, and white girls be all on that. Uh, caught my PB on an Ocho. Always have some in the new color stick. Ocho is a it's a good bait. My PB, uh, I caught it on a Reaction Innovations uh, Beaver in uh, penetration. It weighed right nine pounds on Lake Barkley. Uh, been trying to break it. I'm going. I think I will. Uh, I think I had one on Lake X on a pawpaw about two years ago that would have uh, beat it. But you got to get them in the boat. So. Uh, so everybody is a big fan of the Rage Bug. Well, for you finesse fishermen out there, or maybe finesse jig fishermen, here is the baby Rage Bug. So they also made a special Ned Bug too, but this is a baby Rage Bug. Um, I personally would use this as a trailer on you know my finesse ball jigs, or maybe like. DNL makes a um, three sixteenths and quarter ounce little jig. That would be really good. Yeah, bait holder group are great for wheelie setups. Hey, bait man, what a good fall bass baits. Anything that's moving, man. Spinner baits, crank baits, rattle traps, top water, swim baits, great fall baits. And if you guys slow down, get you a little finesse jig. And put that guy on there. Bot city. Unless you're a bot. No problem, man. I, I need to do more videos. I'm probably going to shoot a video tomorrow on big top water baits. So it's kind of weird. I lose subscribers and views when I do live streams. So I really need to put other videos out. So come to San Diego this winter, get one on a trout. Man, I'd love to. Uh, hopefully, I get more vo vacation time next year. Russ Hyde, uh, how do you gain more confidence in crankbaits? Easy. Don't. Just throw a crankbait, period. Put everything else down. That's how I had to get good with the jig. I just took a bunch of jigs and fished for like a week. That's how I learned swim baits. I just took two rods with swim baits. And I made myself throw them and throw them and throw them. But I personally, I get a little ADHD, so I'm always wanting to throw some. So I, I learned to fish a crankbait a lot. Um, and that hurt me because I didn't want to pick up anything else. And um, then I learned throwing a jig and... Uh, a worm and I, I love worm fishing too uh, there, it's definitely an art form but gotta have f uh confidence in a crankbait and i'll tell you the biggest tip crankbait fishing keep it simple i know i show all kinds of crazy colors and stuff on here but you need like three colors you need a shad color you need a red color and you need something with chartreuse you can put any color ba back on it you want but have that three colors some sort of red for the spring a shad color for the summer and fall, and then a chartreuse color for dirty water and dead summer. Just you pick whatever style and those three colors you like, and I promise you'll have some success. You know, clear water, you use your shad color too. Uh, that red's really good in the spring or dirty water. Chartreuse is good all year round. Uh, anytime that water's got color, I, I'd go to chartreuse. I have not, uh, yes, I have used a Picasso shock blade. I really like that big one. That's a really good one. Um, and then they got some other ones I want to try. So that's the baby rage tail bug. So that's my favorite color they make. Summer crawl, very simple. Again, keep it simple. That's a green bait. Uh, green pumpkin with a little chartreuse. So this is, again, summer crawl. Different bait. Uh, I'm not a guy that punches grass. But I would be interested what Mikey Balls thinks of this. This is the punch bug. 
Um, I don't know uh, what I'd do with this. I thought about maybe putting it on a Tokyo rig and dropping it through grass. Maybe that would work. Uh, it's definitely got a solid body to it. It's got rings, but the middle is really solid. The thing about a punch bait is you want a bait that just shoots straight through the grass and doesn't get hung up. So you see there's not a lot of appendages on here at all. It's basically a big thumb with two uh, rage flappers on it. So that's a cool bait. You guys that are grass punchers, flippers, that's definitely one you'll probably want to try. I got to get better at that, but we ain't got no grass. Buzz bait early morning, top water in the morning. Uh, rattle traps always seem to get me bit in the fall early in the morning for some reason. Those fish are really active. Uh, spinner baits great early in the morning. Man, uh, Michael, I don't fish a lot of salt water. I've been twice in my life. Um, Don, I have not tried the Booyah Covert Spinner Bait. It looks good. That's one I need to put on my Christmas list. So, guys that like brush hogs, tell you what, the game hog is every bit as good as a brush hog. Uh, new color, again, from Strike King. Uh, black, blue swirl. I don't know if you can see it really good uh, with the light. But this is kind of like your hematoma from Reaction Innovations. I really like the game hog. Good, good bait. It's, I feel like they're softer than a brush hog. Um, caught a lot of fish on these things. Man bear pig is a good bait, man. I really like it. A little bit skinnier profile than the game hog. But hey, like I said, got to have options. One day they're going to eat the game hog. Next day... They're going to eat the man bear pig. Uh, hardly in the spring will you ever see me go without a bag of beavers. Period. Yep, uh, lipless cranks are good. I like the uh, uh, that jackal lipless. It's really, really good. No problem, Michael. I wish uh, I could help you out, man. Uh, I do throw some dial. Dial saltus is a really good, uh, or saltiga is a really good spinning reel. I got to use those, so. Uh, now this is one of my favorite new colors they just come out with and this is in the baby rage craw and this is uh blue craw red flake and i really wish i'd got the regular size red craw in this but i ain't gonna argue with free when mark says here take these put them on your live stream so everyone knows that blue craw is a sick color well here's a blue craw with a red flake and uh, Six Sense makes a jig, a uh, hybrid divine jig. It's if I can find it without knocking everything off, that is perfect match for this right here. Perfect. So really like that blue crawl. You can see the blue hue and the red flake on that right there. Um, Baby Rage Crawl, your smaller flipping jigs, even small finesse swim jigs is great on. Um, you can Texas rig them by themselves. I'm personally a big rage crawl guy. Oh, we're going to get to that, Jack. We're going to get to that. Here's some more baby rage crawls, uh, or baby rage bugs in Bama crawl. Yeah, um, I love the structure bug. That's a, one of my favorite baits. So this is the Ned bug. And so I want to show a comparison. I'll get that rage bug out. So this is the Ned bug from Strike King. So let's do a little comparison here. Because I think a lot of guys are confused. Um, that... Uh, these are both Ned baits, which you can use. You could use this guy on a Ned bait, but they make this guy too. So this is the Ned bug, Rage Ned bug over here to my right hand, your left. And this is the baby Rage bug. So this one's got more of a narrow profile. And what's kind of cool in here, you know, you could clip these front ends and you've almost got a menace grub. So, I took, I took those off, and I've got a Ned Menace. 
So they also came out with their own Ned heads and Mark gave me some. So they got a, a pretty good keeper on here, but they got a, a different style hook and I've never been a fan, uh, and this is just me, uh, my opinion, I've never been a fan of the sickle hooks. Now my father-in-law crappie fishes all the time and he set swears by sickle hooks. So he's a lot better crappie fisherman than I am. So I'll go with him, but it's got that keeper on there. If y'all can see that, keeper goes pretty far down there. Oh, that one good. And you just kind of push your bait up there. And now you got a little Ned bug. And what's cool about this head, uh, see how flat it is? You should get some really good stand-up action. I rigged that like shit. Pardon my French, but... Um, the cool thing about the net head is you can do so many different things with it. I really like this little baby net bug because then I've got like a, a baby menace grub. So I could swim it if I wanted to. Got the little patented rage tails. Uh, just wait. I'm sure the Guggen uh, line of Bandito Neds will be out soon. Now speaking of, I'm just going to tell you all right now if you hadn't noticed, the favorite rods in the Guggens are done get them out here uh so good for favorite rods that's all i gotta say yep it's almost like a texas so i want to see what this um uh, if i was going to put this rage bug on here what i would probably do is i'm going to cut this this is the regular rage baby bug not the ned one i just want to see how to look on here that bama craw i've started to become a big fan of this color by the way just you can use it about anywhere if I'm gonna put this on here I'm actually I would thread it to almost that keeper oh oh guys oh oh don't do it to me on a net head dude I'm telling you I think some light line could slay some smallmouth on a, in a creek or even on Kentucky Lake, Dale Hollow, fish a real lot line on this thing. Oh my gosh. Woo. What size hook to use on a fluke? I use a four aught uh, Mustad grip pin EWG hook. That's the best fluke hook I have found. Uh, the Gamakatsu hybrid finesse hook's really good, but Mustad grip pin four aught. Uh, the EWG, that is the best uh, fluke one I found. Yeah, almost like a Texas rig. It's exposed, but man, that dude, look at that ra baby rage bug on the net head. That looks good. Looks good. Let's see what else I got in here. Speaking of Ned's, a Ned cutter worm. We're talking about getting real finesse. So the only thing I didn't get, guys, was the Ned Ocho. I'm really uh, you know, Mark had one, like he had one and he couldn't give it to me and that's okay, but I'll get some, but that is a little baby cutter worm. So it's really cool. And you know, I'll go ahead and rig that up. I'm going to put the same strike King head on there that I had on the other one. So I like, I like my, uh, cutter worm with this tail flange up. So I'm going to rig this with the flange toward the eye of the hook. I'm going to do it just like the other one. We're going to go right to the hook keeper. Once we get there, we're going to go ahead and start turning it. And pushing the old guy on. It's really cool. This one's transparent. I don't know if you can tell, but you can see where your, your, your plastic keeper is coming out about that is I can swim this little guy on the bottom almost like a really finesse swim bait and get that little kick of that tail or maybe they want this bait on the bottom and I don't need that flange tail I can just take my scissors cut it TRD right there so I've got really two baits in one this is smaller uh, than the Ocho and you get more of that TRD profile but Oh yeah, two baits in one right there. So you get a bunch in a pack. I think you get nine in a package. 
Uh, and the material, they've used a different material on some of this Ned stuff. But the Ned Ocho has, is it's kind of almost got the profile of that Robo Worm Ned. But they're really sweet. Dude, light green is a really good swim bait color. Z crawl and a wobble head. That's a green one. Uh oh, my light has died. My light's died. It's gone out. So, last thing I'm going to show you guys, and I'll answer some more questions here. Better trying to make sure I, I don't leave anything out too much out here. I might have to get some pictures this week. So if you guys aren't, make sure you follow my Instagram. It's Baxter the Bait Man on uh, Instagram. Uh, my Snapchat's Baxter the Bait Man, but I hardly ever get on there. You ever use the offset EWG Ned hooks? I do. I do have some owners that are offset, uh, but I personally uh, just use an exposed hook. I don't, where I'm fishing Ned's not around a lot of grass, and I don't fish them in the brush, but around it. Uh, what was Jeff's? Yeah, Mark Daniels Jr., Brian Latimer, Scott Martin, Andy Morgan, Zach Burge. Favorite has a really good pro staff. And I'll be honest, uh, I'm not really worried. If I'm favorite, I'm not really worried if the Googans come out with their own line of rods or anything because they're just going to copy somebody else's stuff. I mean, let's just be real here. Um, dude, Ignite Swim Baits, those guys are awesome last thing i got from strike king is another new color and i don't know if these even turned out that good and i don't know if you'll be able to see them that good but this is called crawl daddy and it's kind of a black orange swirl and i don't know how good you can see that um probably not real good and this is also the magnum uh Minus scrub. I don't know if this light works or not. But that's a kind of a black orange swirl. Maybe you can see it against my t-shirt. Eh, probably not. Really like this color, but this is out in the uh I think you can get it in the structure bug. Um obviously the minus scrub and this magnum minus scrub, awesome for a wobble head right here. A big bulky jig great on the back of a chatterbait too um but you can get it in the net ocho it looks really good in the ocho uh the net ocho so and they got another one that's a green pumpkin purple swirl and uh i think tackle warehouse has that one too so that's new from strike king uh, I didn't get the strike king hard knocker sexy dog it sounds awesome in the water so Scott Martin uses his favorite as well, but is with goo. And so what's going to happen there? Scott Martin looks like he's still uh, with favorite rods. Look, if you don't own more than 50% of a company, and I found out the hard way, you really don't own Jack. So, you know, I don't think the Googans had enough equity in favorite. You know, they could leave and, you know, whatnot. They could easily be bought out. Big Bot Bates makes great stuff, man. I agree, Thomas. That's what happens when you get a bunch of pond fishermen out there building rods. Uh, I'll only throw a Cinco's chatterbaits. Uh, John B's pretty versatile. I like. I actually do like John B's. Probably the best fisherman. A uh, Parrick's not bad either. But I hate to bring this brand up. It's one of my favorite brands. I like Rain's Tungsten, man. I just found a big pile of some Rain stuff. I didn't know I had. Um, like this morning, well, big pile. I found like a pack of nail weights and some football heads. Really like range stuff. A little pricey, but make some good stuff. Really good nail weights. Just caught my first lake trout. Dude, that's sweet. Never caught one. No problem, Dan. That's why I do this, and we're going to upload it later. Uh, I'm fixing to jump off here, though, in just a few minutes. I'm going to have to grab a thumbnail because um, I'll redo the thumbnail for you guys. Make it nice and click, Betty, for everybody. So keep going, almost 500.
500 what? Hopefully we're not 500 live viewers. That would freak me out. It says on here that we got... Holy shit, 453 people watching this thing. Are you guys serious? Holy smokes, guys. Thank you so much for the love. Uh, guys, uh, do me a favor. If you're new to the channel, channel hit the subscribe button. Uh, if not, oh well. Uh, hopefully, you continue watching my videos. Uh, I don't think I ever remember 453 people being live on here. This is That is crazy. I am uh, I'm blessed. I'd love to keep going. You guys tell me what you want me to talk about. Let's talk about Major League Fishing. Yeah, what turds. Uh, I got some good friends that fish uh, Major League Fishing. But you need to listen to the last low-budget live uh, with my man and good ball fan, Luke Duncan. Uh, and Luke could tell you what happened. Uh, Major League Fishing basically threatened his job the way it sounded like. And that's crazy, man. And from Luke's perspective, and I agree, what does TH Marine have to do with Low Budget Live broadcast? Shame on them uh, for doing that. Dude, Jeff Scarborough coming in with that hot Andrew Hamilton. Thank you so much, Jeff. Appreciate that. Love talking baits and stuff with you guys. So, yeah, shame on Jim Wilburn. Uh, you know, I totally get it from Luke's perspective. That would be like somebody calling Pella Windows and saying, uh, yo, uh, this bait man guy on here, man, he was, he was really dogging my bait company. Pella Windows is going to be like, who? Uh, okay. Why do we care? Uh, yeah. So, you know, good for Luke for standing up for him. Luke, I hope you get to watch this. Uh, but I'm going to tell y'all right now, the most important part of that podcast is, uh, Luke lost his mother and, uh, you know, let's all keep Luke. Uh, and his family and your thoughts and prayers and whatnot and uh, keep some good vibes going his way uh, always gotta look out for my fellow Vol fans so uh, but anyway so here's uh let's let's look at the positive and and i want to tell you guys i have i'm doing a podcast i'm gonna i love doing the video and all that but i want to do a strict podcast and, and whatnot just because so many people like just like listening and it doesn't eat up as much data when you're driving or whatnot. Just listen to audio. So a little sample of that is I was want to talk the good, the bad, the ugly about you know our three big tours. But uh, for the most part, Major League Fishing announced their schedule. Let's be honest here. Other than like one event, they're pretty much going to places where they're going to catch some big ones. Hey, okay, guys, if you're fishing the Slaunch Master Classic tomorrow. Uh, make sure you have a good time and be safe and uh, tell my boy Ben what's up. I I'm, I'm miss not being able to be over there with him. Um, just didn't work out this time. But I guess one good positive, though, is I don't think Ben can make fun of the Vols right now because Nebraska is somehow Jeremy Pruitt looks better than Scott Frost. Never thought that would happen. But Dude, I love the IMAX Pro. It's a great uh, rod. I'll be honest with you. Um, as far as uh, rods, you got G Loomis up here, up here, and then everybody else is kind of here. Now you got some guys like St. Croix, um, and I like those Douglas rods, man. They're nice. They're nice. They're right here. The six cents rods, they're right in the middle. I really like them. I haven't fished them enough to put them in that high tier category. Now, my budget, six cents rods, dial rods, that's perfect for my budget. I can't afford this up here, so I'll stay here. Uh, Dobbins, I'm going to put Dobbins up in the top tier, man. You know, Gary designed a lot of those crankbait rods uh, for Gary Loomis. Gary Dobbins designed Loomis rods, if a lot of people didn't know that, especially the crankbait series rods. But, um, Dude, Minnesota looks good, man. I'd like to see them beat Pedo State. That'd be great. Um, but, um, G Lemons is top tier. Uh, Shimano makes good rods, especially that Jackal Poison Ardina. Dude, I held one. That is sick. So I want to really do a, a buyer's guide. Don't want to copy tackle, uh, tactical bass. And obviously I can't afford to go buy a bunch of high end rods. 
So maybe I can get uh, a friend of mine or somebody that's got some to, to show you guys. Or maybe I can get one of the reps to, to throw me one. Phoenix makes great rods. Matter of fact, the Phoenix Feather is a stupid good rod for the price. It is really nice. Really nice. Yeah, uh, Gary Dobbins and uh, Pal, those guys do not get along at all. And that's, you know, I, I've got a Pal rod. I like it. It's a good rod. Uh, that's a sore subject. Loyal to Shimano x -Pride. Dude, x -Pride is a sweet, sweet rod. Matt, please tell me uh, what that uh, spinning is. What's my favorite food from McDonald's? Man, believe it or not, I don't eat a lot of food. I've lost about 65 pounds in the last year. You can go look back at some of my older live streams and stuff. Uh, this is just uh, a fan of orange drink. I actually, from breakfast burritos, and that's about it. Yeah, um, I think so, uh, Thomas. Uh, I really like the sensory rod for the money. Uh, I'm, I'm really looking at the divine rod as well. Favorite spinning reel? Uh, I have a Tatula uh, LT uh, 2500. Um, I like it really well. Of all time, is the Shimano uh, Stratic 2500 CI4. Uh, but I really like that Tatula spinning reel. It is super light, really nice. But I, I've only owned like two spinning reels. Halo makes good rods too. I got a buddy that's got a power tackle rod. Great crankbait rod. What do you think about Thrift and Deli and other great anglers being left in AAA? Well, you know what? FLW is not AAA. Uh, I'm just going to tell you guys right now. It is not AAA. Um, now, there are some guys that probably don't even need to be fishing above the BFLs uh, that were fishing on the FLW Tour. But you're going to tell me Scott Canterbury... Wasn't as good as the guys on the Elite Series. Goes from FLW over there and wins Angler of the Year. Yeah. Canterbury, Hammerberry. FLW's got some good sticks. The problem is there's a lot of clutter mixed in with there. So I was really hoping they would push the tour down to 100 boats. So the cream could really... You could see how competitive those guys really are. Um, there are a lot of guys out there that are probably really glad that it's a 150 160 boat field now because their ass was going to be sitting on the couch um but i think I, and i'm going to be really honest with you guys um if major league fishing didn't buy out uh, flw i don't think flw will operate next year and i hate to say that because i've got a lot of friends that work over there especially the tournament directors great great guys and i didn't want to see anything happen to them so in a way if you're a fan of grassroots fishing, you should thank Major League Fishing for what they did. Now, will they change everything up? I don't know. Um, we'll see. Can a cheap combo be good? Looking at getting a heavy setup for frogs. Looking at Academy Express Series for budget. Yes, cheap combos can be good. Um, especially for like a frog. You don't have to have a high-end super sensitive rod for a frog. That's pretty much a visual bite. I tell guys all the time, you can have an awesome topwater set up for like 150 bucks total, maybe even 100 I mean, heck, the topwater rod I use for poppers and walking baits that aren't this big, it's like a 20-year-old all-star rod and just a Shimano Casitas. It works great. All right. Elite Angler Academy. Uh, what are you hearing? Remember, several guys retired from BBT and a few more invites going out to guys. I don't know. I don't think any guys are really retiring. Uh, I did hear a rumor David Fritz is going to retire, but I think Fritz is fishing uh, the late series. Um, but I, I can't confirm that. Um, Omega uh, Tackle has a tour that is... Uh, well, they're part owners, Brad and Michelle are, and that's the National Fishing Professional League. Uh, I don't know a whole lot of details, but is the timing right? I don't know. It may be. Um, it gives guys another option. They're going to have six tournaments a year, two in the spring, two in the summer, two in the fall. Um, so there's guys that fish FLW. They want to jump in and fish an extra event or how that they're not going to schedule on top of the opens. Maybe guys that are just fishing opens. 
we'll see. Um, I don't know. I will tell you guys, there's people on the internet that keep saying major league fishing doesn't allow you to fish comp other events. That is false. Uh, Justin Atkins fished the Costa series. Uh, he fished bass opens. Um, Iconelli fished bass opens. There are several guys that fish Bassmaster opens and Costas before the merger with FLW. So the person saying that, uh, people are putting that out there. It's some bad misinformation. Is um, do you fall any of the coasts on good old coming? Yes. Matter of fact, uh, been on the channel before. My good friend Hunter the Hammer went and fished the Coastal Championship as a boater. One of the last people in the division to qualify. And dude finished like 16th. Um, so I was really excited for Hunter the Hammer. I need to get him on here. He just don't talk that much. Like, I got to kick him up. Dude, you got to talk, man. Um uh, and uh, he caught him a really unique way. And I, I won't say that's uh, his time to shine. I'll let him get on here and do that. So, Mike, aesthetic. So, all the new Guggen hard baits are copies of others. If so, which are they copying? Yeah, pretty much, man. Uh, uh, the Guggen baits, uh, I, the so hard baits pretty much copied six cents. I mean, it's pretty bad. If I have to go buy some to show you guys. And I'll be honest, their paint jobs are freaking awful. They look like a cross between a four-year-old and Jinko. I mean, Jinko should basically go sue them because, man, you copied our awful paint jobs. But, dude, we got 500 viewers. I don't know if that's right. If it is, that is awesome. We balling. I'm fixing to go play some Call of Duty after this. Uh, hit my, we can get a Call of Duty lobby going. Make sure you smash the like button too. So I guess y'all want to stay up late and do Bateman stuff. So maybe a new time here. Uh, we'll be doing Bateman live late at night. Dude, I like the new COD, man. I'm not going to lie. If my son didn't jack up my KD, I'd be really good. So I cannot believe that, guys. I appreciate it. And anytime you guys ever want to donate to the stream, feel free to. I don't force guys. I don't beg for subs. But that does help me. Uh, buy some baits and whatnot and always try to get more equipment so if you guys i may stream next week and do uh, a week stream uh mark menendez wants to come in here i'm gonna have uh, jake lawrence is gonna come in uh and talk to you guys but bait man is always gonna do bait man on saturday night by himself so um i really uh it seems like everybody wants to be on late night. Man, your wife's asleep, your kid's in bed, you gotta get on here and jump with the bait, man. I gotta answer a really important text right here. Dude says, I got some Strike King weight sheds. Do you want them? Uh, yeah. But, uh, let's see. Send me those SKTs and I'll donate to the podcast. Clark, uh, you're the reason I got those, because I'm not going to lie, when you said, uh, that's the color I'm looking for, and I hadn't even told you when I bought these. So there's a guy y'all asked questions to, is Clark Ream. We need to get Clark on here. He's a good dude. So, guys, this is Clark Ream's uh, secret bait. He's cashed almost every check with this uh, right here. This is Japan Crawl. I'm going to let the cat out of the bag right here. Um, hard to get, man. Uh, I think they come back out with it though. So we get Clark on here. He he has no filter, and that's a really good thing. He is like if the bait man fished the tour, he'd be like Clark, but he does have a better beard than me. At one time, he had the best goatee on tour. Uh, did you see the tactical bass new dirty jigs head lighter hook? Yeah, man. I need to grab some. I I like a finesse in a lot of swim baits or a lot of wire i should say Whew. dude that skeet mini mini dr is a killer bait the only thing and i learned this from some guys especially clark told me and i agree when you're reeling a lot of rocks um that grinds that bill really bad and you can't make it if you're if you're fishing it all day you gotta use more than one bait I am, uh, I'm in Kentucky, right on Kentucky Lake. 
I'm near the city, so if you hear them cars, Black Friday Buyer's Guide. Buy all the JDM stuff. Uh, I'm not through the DR DRX. Uh, if you're in the Texas area, I'll go ahead and tell you right now. Clark runs, uh, I guess he was Elite Academy, uh, Elite Angler Academy earlier. Clark is a very accomplished Lawrence Humminbird guy. He's a computer guy, too. He's a really good graphic designer. But if you're in that Texas area, uh, Sam Rayburn, uh, those lakes, uh, hit Clark up. Go out him with for a professional day on the lake. I mean, he guides his electronics class, uh, so I'm gonna throw him a bone. I really appreciate uh, you know Clark Ream FLW Angler Check Casher joining in here. So, what console do you play on COD? I play Xbox. So here's my Xbox gamer gamer tag. I put it in here. Vol of Duty. It's weird how many people are like, what's a vol? I'm like, dude, Tennessee vol of duty. And they're like, oh, yeah, I'll get it. Duh. So, man, it's, that cold front's been good on this lake. I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i get off here in about five, ten minutes and play. I mean, we've got, this, my screen says 453 people. I cannot believe that many people are watching me talk about fishing baits. Uh, this is really crazy. 524 people. Whoa. There's no way that's real. Ron Hill says, Roll Tide. Yeah. Guess what? Go Tigers. Uh, LSU is coming, boys. And uh, that is going to be an epic game. So that means we got to play Kentucky next week. So out it on the bait show. Let's see. Yeah, that's right. Well, guys, I'm going to have to jump off here because I've got to still grab a thumbnail for the guys that aren't going to watch this tomorrow. I do not know Billy Larson, Lake Fork guy. The best guy I know on Lake Fork is Kelly Jordan. Uh, they had a tournament, the Toyota Texas Bass Classic. Uh, it was called the Kelly Jordan Invitational. And that was an awesome tournament. I'm not going to lie. You got, to, where'd you meet me at, Cameron? Uh, I don't remember, but I appreciate it if I met you. Uh, and I forgot. I'm sorry, bud. But I'm going to, Kelly is, I don't know what Kelly's doing, Clark. I think he's deer hunting right now. He's he's the, he's a good dude. Nice meeting me tonight. Where was I tonight? Oh, yeah, on here, duh. So, anyway. I'm going to jump off here, guys. Exciting night here. Make sure you smash the like button. If you're new, hit the subscribe button. I'm sleepy, Ryan. I work midnights, and uh, I had a kid's birthday party to attend today. So, balls make me tired as well. But, uh, I'm going to get off here, play some COD, probably shave his unibrow or whatnot. So, but thank you guys so much uh, for joining in. Um... Hope y'all like the new Strike King stuff. I hope y'all like the Arashi Glide. Oh yeah, that's probably my favorite. The big working class zeros. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm not going to get waxed on live stream anymore. Not happening. My wife enjoyed that way too much. So, going to jump off here. Thank you guys so much. Uh, you guys have a wonderful evening. And God bless each and every one of you.